the celestial sign of winter and the brightest Venus can get. Hey there, stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Pois Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regis, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. In case you haven't noticed, winter's coming. Now, for people who live at northerly latitudes like Dean, the temperature change itself is notice enough that winter is on its way. But for people who live at southerly latitudes like James in Florida, the temperature change is not notice enough of winter's arrival. Indeed. Notice of winter's arrival demands a cosmic change, one that's visible all over the northern hemisphere at this time of the year. And if you go outside any clear night in early December at 8 p.m., you'll notice the surest sign that winter's coming, no matter what the temperature. Let's show you. Okay, we're facing east any night next week at 8 p.m. Just above the horizon, you'll see three evenly spaced stars in a row, flanked by four brighter stars. And these mark, respectively, the belt, shoulders and knees of Orion the Hunter. And for the rest of your life, whenever you see Orion just above the horizon at 8 p.m., you'll know that the official beginning of winter, the winter solstice, is only three short weeks away. But if we look into the west after sunset, one special sky goodie is guaranteed, and a second is possible, but definitely not guaranteed. Venus will be the brightest it can get in the evening sky through the middle of December. After the 16th, you'll not see an evening Venus as bright as this for the next eight years, until the end of November 2021. The second, not guaranteed, but potentially spectacular thing in the after sunset sky is Comet Ison. These will be the peak days for spotting this potentially great comet. We're recording this show at the end of August, and at this time, it looks like the comet may put on a great show. If Comet Ison pans out, look to the right of Venus for the tail of Comet Ison peeping above the horizon after it gets dark, but you'll need a dark sky. What we can guarantee is that on December 4th, a thin two-day-old crescent moon will be down and to the right of Venus. Then on the 5th, the moon will be closer and above Venus, and then on the 6th, higher still. If you fail to spot Comet Ison in these evening skies, I suggest you try the pre-dawn eastern sky as well. I know that doesn't sound right, but it is the right thing to do. And there are other things, astronomical, that just don't feel right to a lot of people. And one of these is how the days feel at the beginning of winter. Now we all know that the shortest day of the year, the day when there's the least time from sunrise to sunset in the northern hemisphere, is the day of the winter solstice, December 21st. But I've always felt that the days are actually getting a little bit longer by then. They actually seem to lengthen as they approach the solstice. But why? Astronomically speaking, this feeling can be explained. More people experience sunsets than sunrises, and although the winter solstice is the shortest day of the year at mid-northern latitudes, nevertheless, December 7th feels like the shortest day of the year because it is the day of the earliest sunset at mid-northern latitudes. So the days do seem to lengthen after December 7th because sunset occurs a little bit later each day. After the solstice, the 21st, until about January 5th, they seem to lengthen more rapidly than they are actually doing because on January 5th, we have the day of the latest sunrise. Astronomer Guy Otwell puts it very nicely. Remember the sequence. Number one, earliest sunset, December 7th. Number two, shortest day, December 21st. Number three, latest sunrise, January 5th. So now you know why the days seem so short at the beginning of December. After all, most of us judge the length of the day by the time the sun sets. So what you've been feeling all these years is a correct feeling, even though the reality of the situation is quite different. Fascinating, isn't it? How we perceive the universe around us? And our pursuit of the knowledge of it is reason enough to always keep, keep looking, looking up. up.